and uh, only a few months back all the public sector banks came together to say that in two years we will double the total installed base of ATMs and half of the new ATMs that we put are going to be rural ATMs. So they brought out sort of two set of specs, one for rural, one for urban. And I'm not saying all the rural ATMs are going to acquire are going to be delivered by us. There'll be others who will want to play too. Uh, but I think the, uh, there are different metrics of how big an impact you have made. So by some other criteria, I think we have made a significant impact. Yeah. Um, good evening, sir. Um, mechanical engineering branch is kind of known like the evergreen branch. Whereas uh, we hear a lot about electronics and computer science leading the way ahead and bringing about a lot of change and a lot of developments. So where do you see uh, mechanical engineering industries and the branch in terms of where it will grow, where it will change in the next few years? Because generally uh, it's such a traditional branch that we don't hear a lot about rapid changes happening in the future. So in terms of industries in the branch, what do you think uh, we will see in the coming future? See, I think if you're talking about products, you should stop talking about branches. Everything is so interconnected, interdisciplinary. Uh, it's like asking, uh, is stirring more important than chopping? You're actually trying to make a meal. Uh, unless everything comes together. None of my products have pertained to any one particular thing. And uh, which is also why I said that uh, uh, it is almost a given that if you're going to start trying to develop something, it's almost certain that you don't have the knowledge needed to do it. Uh, you can only learn it along the way. So it doesn't matter what base of knowledge you start out with, as long as you're open and uh, you know, willing to learn new things. Uh, and most uh, of the interesting things happen at the intersection of uh, different boundaries. So it's only in school and college that we talk of subjects and branches. Uh, but in real life, there are no such boundaries. like you're challenging the uh, the big mills itself so so what were the uh, I mean you must have faced heat from the mills right so how was it like not really it's not like the world is full of conspiracies um, there is room for all kinds of uh, players it is not that if I introduce pizza into the city then all the idli makers are going to gang up and beat me it's not like that um, there is room for everybody over time, there will be some trends which move in certain directions. But it's not like uh, there is a necessarily a, um, a very uh, inimical relationship of some kind. And uh, if an idea is good, uh, somebody doing the other thing will say, okay, let me stop doing that and buy into this idea. So this also happens all the time. So uh, I had one question. Like, uh, like when you move around, when you talk to people and you meet a lot of people, you find a lot of gap in the market. So, like, there are two questions that are interrelated to it. So, how did you find out that? Is it visible and uh, will it grow to a big thing or, like, is it a small skill thing? And second thing, like, did you ask for someone to mentor you or, like, uh, you just went along and uh, just went with it without seeing the scalability of it and then jumped into it? Because if you, if you talk to a lot of people, you will find a lot of gap, like, in every, in every field, every place, you will find some gap, which needs to be filled in. So, any analysis or? Sure, world is full of opportunities. And um, I think the most important thing that I look for is, will it make a large impact in relation to how much effort I put in? Uh, unless I see that happening, I'm not drawn towards it. Um, but that is just my way of looking at it. And uh, yeah, regarding mentorship, I think, um, as a society, we are uh, such that everybody likes to give advice to others. And um, so I have got a lot of advice, much of it good. Uh, uh, but uh, one has to have a mind uh, of one's own. Uh, I can't be like taking the vector sum of all the advice I give and decide what I'm going to do. That's not going to work. I must have clarity about what I want to do. I may make mistakes too. That's fine. No problem. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
Uh, Kannan, very enjoyable talk, and your wit specifically, I think, uh, enjoyed it. Uh, some specific details, more from the perspective of innovation. In all the three products that you did, uh, there is a very core point when you are experimenting and trying out different technologies that you know that it's just come together. You know, you have a small team, maybe you're trying out something. And initially you start out without a clarity of, okay, will this work? But then you're putting together some of these things and you're trying it out, you're refining. To a point where you see that some things are coming together. Is this uh, something which has happened in all the three cases? For the the question is, um, the are you saying do you need a team? Engineering and uh, innovation part of it. Yeah, the important thing is actually to know that the idea is going to work. And that's normally the challenging part. It's important to not spend a lot of money at that stage. Yes. How uh, much money did you spend for all the three, for that, up to that point? Um, at that uh, very early stage of knowing whether the idea will work or not, um, again, it depends on how you do your accounting, because you can do all sorts of things. I can have 200 years of uh, year on year 50% growth and then go bankrupt, <laughs> like Lehman Brothers. Uh, but yeah, no venture funding uh, of any kind, no formal funding, no obligation to meet anybody's. No, it was uh, zero till that point for each of these things. Some time, some time of people who can afford to give their time without being compensated and maybe a few small components and other things which are mostly paid out of loose change of some people in their pockets, but no formal funding at all. Good evening, sir. Uh, my question relates to the welding example. Uh, I'm really privileged to try it out. I really like the look and feel of it and, you know, the sparks, that the sounds and the illumination I had. It kind of gave me a, a realistic feel about welding. And I wanted to ask you uh, one thing, that it also involved a screen on which one tested. So that wouldn't that be a, you know, cost factor? Or another thing is, when you identify that this is a skill gap uh, in this set of audience, how would you bridge that gap? As in ways of reaching out, or would it be like uh, there'd be training centers, or how would you go to these people? So yeah, there is some expenditure involved. I'm not saying that there's no expenditure involved. My only answer to your question was there was no formal <coughs> formal funding involved. So the screen, for instance, about 15,000 rupees. So uh, anybody can sort of give it. Uh, but it's not like you're getting a formal funding from an angel investor or something. And we built this with the idea that it will be a platform. It was only an our idea that we build something for welding, then we can transform it into, say, by just changing the hardware, I can make it into a spray painting gun. But essentially, the architecture remains. I can do a number of skills on the same thing. And to our surprise, when we showed it around, the people who uh, wanted to buy it as a welding simulator said, now can you build something similar like a for spray painting and for this and that. So we knew that, okay, we are on the right track. And uh, yeah, this is not uh, something to replace a conventional uh, instructor or um, a training uh, institute. It is something that will augment. It will help them to double or triple the throughput of students uh, and uh, also reduce the cost and reduce the duration of the training. Uh Kanan, my question is about the exit strategy strategies. Like when we see a normal like business entrepreneur, we, we can see that okay, they can probably exit more easily than the entrepreneur who is innovating for the rural marketplace because the social impact is also also involved there. So what is your views on that? I don't know. In fact, one of my uh, complaints about this venture capital culture is that it has rubbed off on the entrepreneurs. And um, they also, before they start the venture, they're talking about exits. Uh, actually, businesses were built as lifetime commitment or you know, transgenerational commitments. It takes a lot of effort to build an abiding business. Uh, it's, otherwise, you only uh, you are like some fly-by-night operator. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, businesses are built like that at all. Um, the entrepreneur should not be thinking of an exit.
Kanan's friend said, uh, Kanan's got the shadiest LinkedIn profile in the world. It has uh, four current <laughs> positions, zero previous positions, and occupation is parallel entrepreneur. <laughs> Cost for the ATM was, I think it was written 175,000 rupees. I saw a number there, or 3,800 okay. dollars. Uh, how did you come at that number? Did you have a goal? Like, what was the cost of the first ATM that you had developed? I mean, at the first pro working prototype, what was the cost there? How did you come to this, or uh, how are you sure that this is the best optimal price? I mean. See, we went through different architectures of the product and different uh, models of pricing. Um, but very quickly, first we started with a very aggressive price line and a very revolutionary architecture. Uh, it, even today is, I think, uh, too futuristic to be acceptable to the market. But probably five years from now, it will be the norm. But we were way ahead of time. Uh, because the product we are building has to plug into a pre-existing ecosystem of a certain vintage. So at that time, we had, uh, in fact, uh, targeted a sub one lakh rupee price. Uh, but very quickly we realized that actually price is not the real differentiator. There are certain other features that are much more important. And uh, so our emphasis shifted. And uh, the other thing about price is that in many of these products, uh, price is a lot linked to volumes. And uh, there is this um, chicken and egg problem. If the price is lower, I'll get more volumes. But if the volumes is lower, then I'll be able to offer a lower price. So you have to break that log jam somewhere. And uh, so beyond a point, we said, okay, we are going to offer all of these features, which are the clear advantages. But other than that, we will, we will simply look at what the competition is offering and we'll price ourselves 40% lower. So that's all. <laughs> Any other questions? But I think uh, after that, I have spent more time in uh, IIT than I did during my uh, stay here as a student. And uh, all along I have interacted particularly with uh, uh, Professor Baskar and uh, Ashok Jinwala and his team, but also with um, uh, many other people in other departments, students, a lot of them. Uh, many of them do internships. Based on your that, that two hour interaction, what is your impression of you know, where our students and our young alumni are in their entrepreneurship? What do you think are their strengths and where do you think their weaknesses are that they should look at? I think the um, uh, passion is very strong. Uh, when I was their age, uh, it was unheard of that uh, somebody talks of entrepreneurship as a formal thing. Business meant that um, uh, either you are inheriting some uh, rich uh, family uh, tradition or that you have some unsavory connections with some politicians and out to make a quick buck. Uh, but uh, any other middle path was unheard of. And so in that sense, there's a uh, uh, change in perception, which I think is very good. Um, but there is also a little bit of um, um, what uh, I may call it, which uh, a little bit of uh, unfamiliarity with the uh, rough and tumble of what it really is, uh, certain perception that it's, um, it'll make me very rich. Sure, it could make you rich, but then other options of a conventional career too could make you rich. Uh, but everybody thinks, okay, I'm on an entrepreneurial journey, I'm the next Steve Jobs or something like that. Uh, but uh, I think that's just a face that people will uh, grow to it. Uh, I think they had to actually get down to action and uh, there is the peril of reading too much uh, before doing anything and a lot of people are uh, frighteningly, it is not good, you should actually go and do things. <laughs> uh, let's thank Kannan again for his wonderful lecture and uh, also as a token of our appreciation, memento and I will invite his uh, batchmate Professor Arul here to hand in the memento.